Welcome back to Newsmaker Live. We're discussing environmental health and with Juni Creole coming up this weekend, uh, there are certain things that you might want to know as far as food preparation and the food that you would want to consume or intend to consume this weekend in the various communities hosting that Juni Creole celebration. Um, as we as we go through, I mean, I mean, we've been, we've been learning a lot about rats, but then there are other rodents as well. There are other creatures that we need to be concerned about roaches for example and th these yeah. carry a lot of um, yeah, germs yeah. bacteria and there stuff are three species of roaches we have the German roach the American roach and the oriental roach or you want to call it um, Batella blatella okay. muscles yeah and um, what we ha we have in St. Louis are two species the teenager the German roach and the American roach. The American roach is the mahogany color roach and the teenager, the small one, or the German roach. Mm -hmm. Now, roaches also breed prolifically. The German roach, she will give birth to approximately 48 babies. Okay? That's in one casing. Mm -hmm. The thing you see she carry at the back of her contains um, 48 eggs so when that will hatch in approximately 16 days that's a lot of roaches you have there roaches are known for transmitting um, gastroenteritis typhoid fever and cholera mm. simple as you see them there if the disease is present in the island well then okay, if they are present then they're gonna transmit it but right now we do not have those diseases here you have gastroenteritis all right, and we all know that roaches live in the drains, in the pit latrines, in the houses. They will live in dark, moist areas. Mm. Okay, if you want to get rid of them, again, sanitation. The roaches come out at nights and they will walk all over your utensils in search of food. But if you clean the premises, your sink properly, you're going to eliminate. Have, you're going to have them under control. So again, sanitation comes into play. That's very important. So, again, we, we focus on the roaches from the from a ministerial perspective once they present a potential disease threat to persons. In the food establishments, we will advise persons what they need to do to get rid of the roaches. Again, sanitation comes into play. They have to practice good sanitation measures to eliminate the roaches. Mm -hmm. What about the oriental oriental roaches? We don't have it here. It's the Chinese that really have. What, what do they look like though? They're flat and they're broad. Flat and broad. And I they see. move slowly across the, the, the floor. Okay. Right. So they're easier to kill? Well, walk on them, you mash them, yeah. Because mm -hmm. they move very slow. And you have right. all these the, the German roach is very hard to kill. You, get, you need to get a special um, poison Shoot. for that one. <laughs> okay, a special poison. Mm. The American roach, easy to kill. Any kind of um, insecticide on the supermarket shelf would be effective against them. So but you, you have to mm -hmm. change the chemical periodically. If you continue using, for example, bot for mm -hmm. the entire year, roaches may develop some resistance. The offspring may develop some resistance mm. to that bot. So you have to change it. So to control them, you can use those um, on the shelves insecticide. So you're saying, in, in other words, those people who, who favor one insecticide and who say use BOP all the time or who use big one all the time or use the fish. They need to change. That it, it, this is not very effective. No, it's not. Now, now the, the German roach, why is it difficult? Are they immune to some extent to those insecticides or something? But I won't say they're immune, their exoskeleton is a little different and the way they eat, the quantity of food that they may consume, you know, is not as much as the American roach. So it becomes very difficult to kill the German roach, all right? And the best way to really deal with them is to make sure you do not, they, they travel on the crates, the foods that you bring in, your crates of juice, your juices, your um, milk, mm -hmm. they travel on those, they hide on them and they enter the house and eventually create an infestation. So the best thing is, again, sanitation. Practice good sanitation in order to keep them 
of the establishment. Mm. So what we've been saying is keeping your environment clean is important because it doesn't just take care of rats, it takes care of cockroaches, oh. it deals with flies, it deals with a host of other vectors. Um, dealing with the issue of bulk waste, so often people have an old refrigerator in the yard, an uh, old stove that they do not need. Um, sometimes you have piles of lumber, you know, that is decaying, rotten, rottening. We need to, to begin to engender a sense of cleanliness in, in our in our day-to-day -day activities. We must begin to think clean and act clean. Mm -hmm. And what we found is um, we 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 we're dealing with uh, with uh, a generation where many times people throw things all over the place. Mm -hmm. And you would expect we would have matured at this particular time to better manage our waste. But when we do that, we're providing food, we're providing harborage for a number of dispersed, and we're creating our own problems. I mean, we talk about castries and being infested with rats, but, but when you look at castries on a whole, it, it, many times you see it as a dirty place. Uh, right. The streets are not clean, you, you get the foul odor emanating from the drains. You go to the market and you see that vendors leave things everywhere and, and this is what they, these vectors require to, to live and once you're going to provide it for them they're going to be there all the time and they're going mm -hmm. to multiply and so forth. So we need to begin to take responsibility for uh, our own health and to dealing with these issues. What we've seen is not to be so heavily dependent on chemicals. A lot of these vectors can be dealt with yeah. with very little usage of chemicals but we have become very dependent on using a, a rodenticide an insecticide and that kind of thing. And what we need to do is really deprive them of the source of habitat, deprive them of the food and the water that they require. Yeah. And then you're going to yeah. be able to deal with them. Uh, t talking about water, go ahead before I, I ask you that question. I was just about to make the point. Um, we've had a, serial, a, a, sev uh, a significant decrease in the number of cases of dengue fever. As a matter of fact, now it's normal. You remember a year or two ago we had an outbreak of St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. But people have begun to manage their water supply. They begin to cover the drums and you don't see all this exposed water. And what we found out is there is a decrease in, in, the, in the level of dengue fever. We have a call on the line. Good evening. Please go ahead with your contribution. I was listening. Good night. Good night. Good night. I was listening to the program there. When the people for this make way all purchase the license, the people are barely trying something to make a living. When you pay the license for one day, how much is the license? A temporary license um, is actually supposed to be operate, uh, be obtained based on a operating area that is per square foot. But acknowledging that what the Ministry of Health has done is to put it at a flat rate, a temporary license is sixty dollars, and that is what is being charged charged per vendor. Um, however. To be able to get a license, and you're not purchasing a license, but you're just paying a license fee. Mm -hmm. um, but to be able to be eligible to get in a license, there are some prerequisites that you must first meet. Uh, all persons would be engaged in handling, transporting, preparation, serving of foods must have a health card. and. Uh, we're saying all persons. Sometimes what you find is one person has a health card and the other six helpers do not have the health card. Once you are going to be handling food, you must have a health card. You must be able to show to us that you have facilities within which to keep your foods. And uh, any food that is of a protein nature, that is high in moisture content, if it is left at room temperature in excess of four hours, you are taking a risk because of how microorganisms multiply and grow. Mm -hmm. And therefore, foods that is left at room temperature in excess of four hours are become very suspect foods. And people must understand that. That is why we are asking for people with these large events that they need to have holding facilities for the foods. What we found is that um, with Juni Creole, for example, the activity starts from the morning. You people are doing breakfast. They're moving to lunch and they're selling food all odd hours, mm -hmm. 9, 10, 11 o'clock in the night, depending as to the demand. And so you must be able, and these are large quantities of food, you must be able to have facilities to keep raw foods 
at proper temperatures, to have cooked foods at adequate temperatures. And therefore, these are very, very important when you look at two important factors in food safety that we look at is time temperature. And these are, these are, these are what is responsible for increasing the level of, of germs in a food. If it's at an ambient temperature for a long time, you have problems. So what we're saying is, um, keep your foods at adequate temperature, hot food hot, what do we mean by that? Um, if you're going to have foods that have to be served hot, it must be at 140 degrees mm. Fahrenheit or above. Cold foods is 45 degrees Fahrenheit or below. That is what it's cold food. A lot of times we don't even understand the principles of hot mm -hmm. food and cold food. Many times I've seen people um, use their hand to touch the food product and say it's hot or touch it and say it's cold. That is not what we're talking about. We're talking about using thermometers to be able to the determine the temperatures. Um, I've seen several times that people try to keep their foods cold and they put it on ice. Mm -hmm. But when you actually do a temperature, it's like 65, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not within the acceptable limit. And so there is a lot of education that needs to, to, to continue. And we've done a lot with, 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 with a number of food establishments and food vendors. And that is why I said tomorrow, I know for sure with the Marigo Bay uh, concessioners, we're going to be meeting at 3 o'clock to have some discussion and to, to let them in as to what it is it's that will be expected of them. Uh, talking about water and, and wastewater, you're also responsible for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what exactly is your role? And before I forget, in the, 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 we, we, we see a, a trend. I think it's a tradition that we have here where people kill crayfish. And whenever there's a major event coming on, June Coral is just around the corner they would use uh, different chemicals to, to, to catch the crayfish, which is not a very healthy practice. Please talk about that. No, it's not. Um, any chemical that will kill an ant, it's going to kill a crayfish, will kill a human being if it's taken sufficient quantity. Um, we do not prescribe to using chemicals for catching crayfish. And I know you have had issues with that. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I've heard you. Uh, several times talking on, on this particular issue from a WASCO point of view. Um, that is a bad practice. That the, the whole issue of water quality is something that, again, the, man the Ministry of Health is mandated to monitor. And we talk about the portability of water supply in our pipes. It therefore means that uh, on a monthly basis, we are doing tests of the water supply throughout the island. Um, if needs be, we do microbiological testing. However, one of the very good indicators to determine the portability of water supply is the level of chlorine in that water. And so we do chlorine residual monitoring of the water throughout the island. Mm -hmm. And we, we get into discussion with Wasco from time to time when we realize that there are issues with the water supply. Dealing with wastewater, any house that is going to be erected, constructed, they must apply to the Ministry of Health. We look at your septic tanks. We look at your portability, portable water supply. We look at the issue of drainage. These are important factors. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, approval must be sought for construction from the ministry before it goes to planning. And that is part of the operations of the ministry. We have our final call. Good evening. Please go ahead with your contribution, caller. Good night. Good night. Good night. In view of the fact that many communities are not able to participate in Creole Day, Simply because of high cost, I heard um, the gentleman saying that the fee is $60, the health fee or whatever. Yes. What I am saying, since so many people in different districts are participating in Creole Day, the fee can be $20. The ministry in collaboration with folk research can organize something. Because, for example, look at this year, how many communities are hosting Creole Day? Very few, because the expense is getting a little too high. So if something can be arranged for next year, all these lectures, all the safety habits, all these things can start early, and some of the fees, please reduce on them somehow or the other, so people will be able to participate more. I'm listening on the phone. Thank you very much for your contribution. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that can be done or is it something that is um, legislated? I think, um, I know it is legislated, mm -hmm. so it's, I cannot on my own decide to waive a fees. 
I believe that uh, the organizers can probably write to the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Health, if they desire, asking for a waiver of these fees. Um, but I can tell you it's a lot of work. What we, these fees are basically an administrative cost fee. Um, it doesn't cover much. And since this is a national event, we have officers who would go to work at the event and monitor what is happening at these events. We, we, have, we work with the organizers, like I said. It means that we, we attend meetings throughout. But um, if, if, if the fees become an issue and the organizers and the FRC wants to, to request for a, a waiver in the fees, uh, I think they can do that. Uh, but it's not within my purview to, mm -hmm. to grant waivers of, of, of these fees. What we have done is we've seen that um, putting a fixed fee is actually cheaper than if you were to actually charge by the square footage, the operating space right. that is there. Um, but uh, how much is the per square foot? Uh, it's it's twenty cents for the first um, hundred square feet, and uh, ten cents for the next five hundred square feet, and five cents for the remaining space. Okay. Plus there is an inspection fee of forty dollars. So if you add it up, you know, just a hundred square feet, which is ten by ten, is already twenty. Plus the inspection is sixty. Um, that is what it is. But like I'm saying, is in the future, if organizers want um, to to request for waiver there there is a system by which that can be done but it is not within our purview to waiver this fees. we cannot do that final words Ronald as we wrap up well Clinton the environment is something that we have to manage carefully it is delicate I remember a lady who worked at one health organization by the name of Rachel Carson she said that no other organism has ever polluted its environment but man the dog, when they want to defecate, they go one side. They don't wait where they're sleeping. They go one side and they defecate and come back and sleep. We humans, we are the only ones who are polluting our environment. We need to take some responsibility, St. Lucia, for our environment. We need to protect the environment. We want to control pests. We have to dispose of our garbage properly, get rid of the, remove the water, the food scraps that we have, dispose of all these things properly in order to get rid of all vectors that we have. The vectors are present with us, they have potential for disease transmission. The only way to control them is through proper sanitation. Clinton. Indeed we have challenges and as a, a growing country we are seeing more and more challenges. We've spoken about the issues with food safety, we need to continue to work together and we want consumers, you the members of the public, to work with us in ensuring that we are meeting the requirements. The Ministry of Health cannot do it alone. We don't have enough persons to go in every shop, every restaurant, every supermarket. We want you to be aware of the things you buy. When you go to the supermarkets, read the labels, check for expiry dates. You, you know, if the product has expired, don't purchase it. Inform us of this thing. The only way we can tackle the many problems that are before us is if we get your support and you are there with us in dealing with these issues. Um, our job is to ensure that your health is safeguarded and that is what we want to continue to do and to do it properly. And we want to thank you for this. Thank, thank you. you very much, Parker Ragnan and Senior Environmental Health Officer and also Reynold Dewitt, Program Manager in the Vector Control Unit in the Ministry of Health for joining us for this edition of Newsmaker Live. Very important information very informative i learned a lot tonight and I, i'm sure that uh, you listening out there would have learned a lot as well so we we want to invite you to come back again to tell us more about how some of your programs are progressing we didn't even get to yes. talk about mosquitoes That's which true. is another vector yeah, yeah. um flies mm -hmm. another yeah. one you know bed so bugs. bed bugs so many vectors that we we did not discuss and we can always discuss them because they affect everyone. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't stay in one place, you know, but once they're in our, our environment, everyone is affected by it. Well, that's all the time we have for this evening on Newsmaker Live. Remember to join me next week at the same time for another program. Just a program note though, tomorrow evening, Delia Dulaw will be here for Dulaw Factor Live. So join Delia and her guests for another <coughs> very interesting and um, program that is out of the, this world. On Saturday night, God willing, I'll be here for the Press Club with some journalist friends of mine where we break down the happenings for the past week. So join me for that program as well this Saturday right after the news at 8 o'clock.
Until that time, I'm Clinton Reynolds. Do have a wonderful night and thank you very much for joining us.